perfect. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another BlueSTEM author chat. So we have um, a couple of schools here with us. We have Ms. Sanchez's class, Ms. Loison's class, and I have students here from Cloverdale. Um, I'm Kim Run. I'm the, one of the publicity uh, co-chairs for the Blue Stem Committee. I'll turn it over to Heather and Carolyn. They can introduce themselves and then we'll get started. Hi, I'm Heather Cribs. I'm the other publicity co-chair for Blue Stem and a K-5 STEM teacher. Carolyn, did you want to introduce yourself? Oh, is she coming? Okay. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I was on another phone call. I'm Carolyn Kinsella, and I am the IL Executive Secretary. I apologize for that. All right. So we we're here today to talk to one of our Blue Stem uh, Award nominated authors, Lynn Kelly, who wrote the book A Song for a Whale. So I'll turn it over to her. She can introduce herself, and then we're going to get started with questions from our readers. Oh, thanks so much. And I'm so glad um, we could have this session. I think my favorite thing to do as an author is meet readers and answer their questions. And of course, during the past couple of years, um, a lot of um, <laughs> school visits were canceled and um, were delayed. And so I'm, I'm so happy those have started again and I get to visit readers again. And if we're, if we're far away, uh, we can still connect online and talk about books and reading and whales and whatever else you're interested in. So um, I'll uh, let's just dive into the questions because that's that's really uh, what I love doing is finding out what is it you want to know about the book. Awesome. So Ms. Sanchez class, we will start with your first two students and then Ms. Loison's class, you'll be next. So if you want to get ready. Um, my name is Celine, and where did you get the idea of your book? Oh, yes, where I got the idea for the book. I found out there's a real whale like this out there. So even though the book is fiction, meaning it's a story I made up, I found out there really is a whale who sings this unusual song. And this whale swims along the Pacific coast, so around Alaska and California. And I, I was fascinated that there's a whale that sings this unusual song that other whales probably can't understand. And I kept thinking about this whale after I read about him. And I think as writers, we look for those ideas that really stick with us. And that lets us know maybe there's a story here and maybe other people will connect to it also. So it all started with that, finding out about the real whale who sings this unusual song. Felicity, and what is your experience with deaf people and sign language? Oh, my experience with deaf people and sign language is that I've been a sign language interpreter for a long time. So my job when I'm not writing is interpreting sign language. And I, I've done that uh, really since college. I didn't go to college planning to be an interpreter or a writer, um, but those, those are two things I kind of stumbled into and found that I, I like them enough to just keep doing them and learning about them forever. Um, so soon after college, um, I um, started interpreting a little bit and you know kept going to workshops, kept taking classes to learn more and more, and you know liked it enough to continue doing it since then. So that that's my experience with the deaf community. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss Loison's class. Do we want to go ahead with your students? My name is James, and what inspired you to be an author? Oh, yes. What inspired me to be an author? That was also an animal. Um, so my first book, Chained, I do have it here. So this is my first book. This has been out for a long time. Um, it came out in 2012, but it was in um, 2006 um, that I, I found out um, Apparently, if a young elephant is is caught, like to be in a like a circus show, for example, it'll struggle really, really hard to break free. And then once it gives up, it gives up forever. So then you, know, you could have, you know, years later, this fully grown elephant that could easily break away, could break free from this little rope or chain holding it in place. But it won't try that. It won't do it because it failed at that once and it just won't try again. 
So when I heard that at a presentation, of course, the speaker's point was, don't be like an elephant if you fail at something. We keep trying until we succeed. And I love elephants, but if that's true about them, then yes, that's one way we don't want to be like them. So then I was thinking about um, maybe this this could be a good story about an elephant who is close to home that could get there if only she knew she was strong enough to break free. Um, I was a teacher at the time uh, that I, I heard this story. And so first I was thinking, oh, this could be a good story to tell the students at school. It's a good example of success and failure. And then after I started working on it, I thought, well, maybe it could be a story um, that could be published if it's good enough. And I need to figure out how, how does that happen? How do I do that? So I had a lot to learn about writing and about uh, publishing. And it was, I didn't know it would take so long, but I, I, maybe it's good I didn't. But it was three years later, it was finally ready to send to editors. That's after a lot of writing, revising, learning about writing, getting feedback, all of that. I'm fast forwarding three years, um, finally ready to send to editors. Once an editor says yes, it's still a year and a half to two years before it's actually a published book, um, something like this that we can see on on bookshelves and read and talk about. Um, so that, but that got me into writing. So it was again, hearing about an animal that, that intrigued me. And it was from there, I found out, well, it is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, but I really like, um, telling a story and I think I want to keep doing this. And now I've put a lot of time into working on it. So maybe I should continue. Um, and then, um, I, yeah, I love uh, coming up with an idea and seeing how the story unfolds. So it, it all started with that, that elephant story. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I was wondering how you came up with the main character, if she was inspired by anyone you met or it was just by thought. Oh yes, so the main character Iris. So as I mentioned, I thought of the whale first. Um, and then when it looked like, yeah, maybe this is a story, maybe there's a story here. Um, I knew the whale wouldn't be the main character. I could have written it that way and some authors might have done that. Um, but I was thinking this will be um, again a, a kid who has a connection for some reason to this animal. And so then I thought, who, who would that be? So someone who feels like she's alone, even when she's around others, for some reason can't communicate with others, because that's a good connection to this whale who's surrounded by ocean life, but can't talk to anyone. Um, and then it took a couple days before it hit me. Oh, wait, I work with people every day who have that experience. Um, maybe because it, it, it's every day for me, it, it took me, a, it took me a while to, you know, realize, oh, wait, this fits with the story. Um, cause that's the experience many deaf people have had that I've known that they were one of a few deaf students in school, or maybe the only one. So that's where the idea for Iris came up. Um, so she's not made up of one person in particular, but of many people I've known. And I think we always put some of ourselves into our characters too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We have a student here. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Lucia, and my question is, um, is there going to be a sequel next? Oh, is there going to be a sequel? Um, that's actually a timely question. Um, I hadn't planned on doing a sequel, um, and I still don't plan on, on there being a sequel. Um, I thought, you know, the book ended in a good place, and now, you know, it belongs to the readers, and you can imagine how Iris is doing now. Um, but I kept thinking about, maybe this is surprising, who's the most annoying character in this book, do you think? Um, you could all just tell me who you think is the most annoying person in the story. I was annoyed by a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could say the most annoying student that that narrows it down. Um, I I forgot, I forgot her name. Anybody remember the name? I'm horrible with names. The like kind of the bully in their class. Um, yeah, more like annoying, like trying too yeah. hard to <laughs> trying so hard to help. Yeah. So I kept thinking about Nina. Um, so it might be surprising. She's actually gonna be the main character in my next book. So I just I kept oh. thinking about this character and um that you know I, and I hadn't planned on writing any more about her or any of the characters but I was thinking you know what if I got to know this character more and figured out 
why is she the way she is? Why is she so desperate to show off what she knows when it's really not much? Um, why does she push people away when she wants to be friends with them? Um, so it's actually, it's not a sequel, but um, it's something called a companion novel, meaning it takes place in the same world, sort of has some of the same characters, um, but not a sequel as in a continuation of the story. But my next book, um, it hasn't been announced publicly yet, but my editor has said, um, okay, I like this draft enough to say this, this is your next book. Um, so it won't be out till 2024. So it's still a long time to wait. May of 2024 is my next publication date. Um, as I mentioned, things take a long time in publishing. So it's a long time to wait, but it feels good. Something's on the calendar anyway. So that one, it's going to be um, about Nina and she um, sees a whooping crane family. She sees an, a, a whooping crane couple with a nest um, and then an egg. Um, I got that idea when I found out whooping cranes, which are the, the rarest bird in the country. There are only about 800 of them, which isn't a lot, but they had um, they nearly went extinct in the 1940s. There were only maybe 15 to 20 left. So it's a good bounce back from 15 to 20. But they are making they're building nest in Texas for the first time in about a hundred years. That's happening because they really belong to Louisiana, but they've wandered over. They don't recognize that boundary. And you know, Nina's not great with boundaries either. So I think that works. Um, but we've had two couples of whooping cranes wander over from Louisiana and build nests in Texas. So I have Nina see that and she knows because she's into birds now, she knows that's a big deal. She's also in a part of this camp that's off limits. So she's going to get in trouble if she tells someone. It's like she knows it's important enough. She has to tell someone, but also she can't do that without getting in trouble and admitting she was wandering in this area that is, that is off limits. So we will see Iris again, though. She knows that um, Iris would be really great in um, helping her out with this project um, and figuring out who these cranes are because no one knows who the mother crane is. Um, that has to do with... Um, matching up their voices um, on the on the computer. And she knows, um, she thinks, oh, I know someone would be really great at this. Um, if only I could get her to talk to me. <laughs> so she will convince Iris to, uh, to help her out with this. So we will see Iris again, even though she's not the main character. All right, we have one more here and then we'll go back to Ms. Sanchez class next. Uh, do you still work as an interpreter? Uh, yes, I still do work as a sign language interpreter. Um, I really enjoy the work. Um, and because I'm writing too, I, I don't interpret full time because I need time to be at home writing the next book. Um, so it's nice that I do get to, um, you know, that work is flexible. So I can I can keep my schedule kind of light when I'm, say, working on a deadline, for example, and then pick up more when I, I have um, kind of a break from the writing. Um, so but at least um, you know, maybe three days a week or more, I'm doing some interpreting also. I like going to um, uh, college classes, especially, and I do some in um, in public schools too. Uh, there are some in the area that I go to, and then there are, you know, other random things that I do. So not full-time, but I do still interpret, and I want to stay in it. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Sanchez class, you guys are up. Hi, my name's Maddie, and besides writing, what are some of your other hobbies? Oh, yes. Um, so other hobbies. So because the writing is now kind of a job, um, I had heard that, you know, once once your books are getting published, the writing is more of a hobby then, and it's good to have something else creative to do um, that isn't for, you know, anyone else. It's not a job. It's just something creative you, you enjoy doing. So I've gotten into some watercolor painting um, and I, I'm not great at it, but I really love um, painting. So, um, and I've been painting birds mostly. So, um, so once in a while I um, take out the, the paper and um, paints and uh, I'll do some watercolor paintings of birds. And of course I love to read. So I guess I would consider that a hobby too. I'm always reading maybe a couple books at, at the same time. Who's your favorite, or my name is Ruthie and who's your favorite author? Oh gosh, it's um it's hard to pick a favorite author because there are so many. I can just look at my bookshelf and maybe pick a few. Um, <laughs> well, I know okay, Catherine Applegate that that's an easy one. Um, I like the one and only Ivan. Maybe a lot of you have read that. 
Um, that's just a perfect book to me. Um, also, um, Sarah Pennypacker, like I have the book packs on my bookshelf and that, that one is a favorite too. Um, and you know, you could probably see a theme there that again, they have to do with, um, a character's connection to an animal. So those are, those are two that I can think of offhand. Um, growing up, Charlotte's Web was one of my favorite books. Um, and so was the Phantom Tollbooth and James and the Giant Peach. So those are some older ones that um, are still around, I think, that are uh, that were some favorites of mine growing up. Hey, right, Miss uh, Loison's class, if you're ready. My name is Moath, and what's your favorite part of Song for a Well? Oh, my favorite part. Um, you know what? I um, Grandma turned out to be my favorite character to write. Um, in my earlier drafts, she was not a very interesting character. She was just sort of um, following along. I'm kind of there for the ride because Iris needed an adult with her. Um, and thankfully, my editor said, um, I think when you revise this again, if you could make have grandma more in on the plan, that'll be more interesting. And she'll be um, more of a um, interesting character, stronger character too. And that was such great advice and it worked out so well. Um, so yeah, she turned out to be my favorite character. And then I think um, my favorite part might be um, when Iris is so worried about grandma because she can't, she doesn't know where she is when they're on the ship. And then she follows um, the, the sound that she feels and then sees grandma in the karaoke bar with her audience on their feet, um, you know, citing the song with her and dancing. Um, so I love that because it let me know too. Um, I mean, Iris was concerned about her, but then she could see that grandma's maybe coming back to herself, coming back to the same grandma that she knew. Um, they won't be the same. Um, it's not like they won't miss grandma anymore or grandpa anymore. I know they'll always miss him, but they'll still um, experience that joy that that they um, had felt before. Did your dogs inspire you to write about animals? Oh, could you say it again? Did your dogs inspire you to write about animals? Oh, did my dogs inspire me to write about animals? Um, I don't think so, except that maybe that's why I have dogs is that um, I do I do love animals. So, and I, I think I'll, I'll always have, dogs so it's more like um it's that that same reason I, I have that connection to animals and I love animals so maybe that's why um in addition to why I always have dogs um I'll probably always write about animals in some way and, and how we're connected to them I do have a dog right here maybe blending in with a glacier but Ellie is is next to me you can maybe just see her head I see his little here, head. so yeah there she is <laughs> and a napping Aww. next to me yeah she might get up and change positions You'll see more of her. There she is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that's been fun about these chats is seeing all the authors' uh, pets and dogs. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a glimpse of a lot of pets. Yes. So we have, and they usually steal the show. Uh, of course. We yeah. have uh, another couple of questions here. I'll turn over. What's your favorite animal? Oh, my favorite animal. Um, I've always been drawn to the large mammals, especially. So really, so these two books I've written, one about an elephant, one about a whale, um, that makes sense because I, um, and they're surprisingly similar, really. We wouldn't think maybe of whales and elephants being being similar. Um, but, you know, I especially love um, wondering about animal communication and wish I knew what they were saying um, and the ways that were similar to them, um, like about elephants having their strong family groups and protecting the babies and um, those kinds of things fascinate me. So um, yeah, I like all kinds of animals, but it's especially the large mammals. Uh, those are my favorites. Thank you. Mm, thank Thanks. you. Okay, one more from us. Cool. Are you ready? Um, do you have any experience repairing computers? Do I have any experience repairing computers? Oh, oh, I do not. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you where that came from. So I mentioned um, Iris wasn't made up of any one 
person, but that skill she has, that hobby was inspired by one person. So there was a student I interpreted for, um, an old, older student. He was in college, is now an engineer, which makes sense. Um, but I interpreted for this student from his first day of college till graduation day. And he was someone who could fix anything and had always been like that. So when he was a kid, um, he mentioned people would bring him their their old radios and TVs to fix when he was around 12 years old. And he just loved fixing stuff. So it didn't matter to him that he you know, couldn't hear what they were playing, you know, like the song or the program when he, when he did fix them. He knows what an electrical circuit should look like and where the wires should go and what parts should be connected and what needed replacing. And I always thought that was really interesting. That's an interesting hobby um, for anyone and especially for a kid. And on top of that, a deaf kid who you know can't hear these devices when they're working. Um, and so later I decided, oh, I'm, I'm gonna give that skill to Iris. That's a good way to show um, she's a smart girl, maybe not so obvious at school how smart she is, um, but this is where she feels really at home when she's with all this junk and repairing these, um, these old devices. And it shows she's a smart girl and she's a creative problem solver. So um, that made sense for her character. I thought it also was a good connection to, um, you know, these like old radios, for example, that don't work right. And this whale she's fascinated with that sings a song that doesn't match any other whale. Um, I didn't know when I started that, that it would become important later in her solving the problem of the story. So I was, um, I was really happy when that worked out. So that's where that skill came from, not from anything I'm, <laughs> anything I'm good at. Thank you. Thank you. So we only have a few minutes. So why don't we try to get like one question from each group and then see okay. where we are there. So Ms. Sanchez okay. class, yeah. you want to yeah, do It goes yours? by fast. I know it does. My name is Maddie and I have two questions. Where okay. do you live and why did you choose that glacier background? Oh, well, the glacier background, because it matches the story. So I like to match my background to the um, something that has to do with the story. Um, I live near Houston, which is a lot um, hotter than anything like this. Um, and so that's where, you know, Iris lives, you know, in the same area too. It has to get from here, you know, in Texas and, you know, east part of Texas near the Gulf Coast, all the way to the Pacific Coast to try to track down this whale. Um, so that's that's where I live is near near Houston. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Miss Loison's class, if you have your one student ready to go. Yep. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Dina. And what's your favorite book? And did it inspire you? Oh, my favorite book and did it inspire me? Um, I can't think of one book that inspired me, but um, as I mentioned, I always loved reading. So Charlotte's Web was a favorite. Um, some of the, um, yeah, like Phantom Tollbooth, that was always a favorite. I think back to books that my fourth grade teacher read to us out loud. So nothing, not a specific book that inspired me to write, but I think, you know, it helps being a reader and I've just always loved books. So probably just the love of books in general. Um, helped help me to write stories and um, perhaps inspire me to write some stories. Every author I know is a big reader too. So we um, we kind of get a feel for good storytelling that way by reading books. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, okay, so we have our last question. My name is Hannah. Um, how many <laughs> books have you made? Oh, how many books have I made? So, so far the two that have been published um, are Chained, which was from 2012. And, you know, Song for a Whale, of course, is the most recent. And then the upcoming, whatever the title will be, about the, the Whooping Crane book. Um, I have others I've written that probably, well, that won't be published. I know every author has books they've written that won't be published. So those are the, um, the two that are published and the one upcoming. Um, I have a book about a kid who um, takes care of an injured octopus one summer. And my editor didn't love it. So she, I actually turned that in before the Whooping Crane book. And she just didn't love it enough to say, yes, this is your next book. So I'm gonna revise it um, once I'm finished with this um, revision I'm working on. And then I'll see, does she like it enough to also publish that one? Or will there be other editors who like it? So so we'll see about that one. Hopefully that'll be another book that's upcoming. And then I just hope to write many more. All right. So. 
Thank you to Lynn Kelly for taking the time to talk to our readers today. We really appreciate it. Um, so before we go, uh, students, if you want to, well, teachers, if you want to unmute and you can say your goodbyes. And thank you so much again for uh, answering questions for uh, some of our sure. readers today. Oh, I'm glad to do it. We'll, uh, we'll let Eloise say goodbye too. You guys can say Here. goodbye. Let's say bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, so cute. Thank you so much. <laughs>